Ko Prudence Stone Toko Ingoa, Kafakahare o Teohu Awahi Kore o Aotearoa, that's the Smoke Free Coalition of New Zealand. I come from here. I was born in Christchurch Women's Hospital and um, I was raised in Rangiora and um, I ran away actually from the South Island. I'm now based in Wellington. Before uh, I lived for years in New York and I put down roots there. I had children in New York also. But it's wonderful to come back um, to the South Island and um, meet with you all today. And it's amazing to come back once every year to see the amazing progress that's being made um, in my homeland since the, since the earthquakes. Um, now, some of you in this room have been in tobacco control for longer than me, and I acknowledge all of you here. But a lot of you, of course, aren't in to the tobacco control sector at all. So I think it's really valuable for me, me to always pay homage to how we got our government's commitment to making Aotearoa smoke-free by 2025. Smoke-free. Awahi kore. This means a prevalence of less than 5% for Aotearoa, less than 5% for Māori, less than 5% for Pacific communities, less than 5% for New Zealanders with mental illness, less than 5% for New Zealanders that are LBGT or I. Whichever way you want to separate the populations, there is equity again for Aotearoa, at least for tobacco, come 2025. So this started in 2009 when Hone Harawera, uh, he was a new MP inside a new Maori party with a new coalition uh, partnership with the national government. He announced the Maori Affairs Select Committee were to hold an inquiry into the tobacco industry and the consequences of tobacco use for Maori. Now, the Smoke Free Coalition and Te Reo Marama, the mainstream and the Māori coalitions of New Zealand at the time, had been working in partnership for about five years prior to that, facilitating a steering group of experts across all work areas of tobacco. And I acknowledge you, Richard, you were part of that, Richard Edwards, who will be speaking to you later today, to develop a vision for a tupika kore Aotearoa, that's tobacco-free Aotearoa. We called it the vision for 2020. Future generations would be protected from exposure to tobacco so that they would enjoy smoke-free lives. I started my job as uh, the executive director of the Smoke Free Coalition, September 2009, the very week Hane Harawera made this announcement. So my job, alongside Shane Bradbrook, the kaifakahaere of Te Reo Marama, was as enormous as it was focused. We had to ensure that every national organisational member of the Smoke Free Coalition and every iwi, every DHB, every PHO with a, or, or cessation service provider, especially Okati Kai Piper, submitted to the Māori Affairs Select Committee with their knowledge of the tobacco industry and the consequences of tobacco use for Māori. We took this task as an opportunity to rally a united voice and a key message to paint the picture of our vision for 2020. And we were successful. So successful that Māori Party co-leader, then Māori Party co-leader, and Associate Minister of Health, now Dame Tariana Turia, was able to pass through Parliament during the inquiry a retailer display ban, amendment to the Smoke Free Environments Act, and a tobacco excise tax regime of annual 10% increases. Powerful leverage she gained from that inquiry. And then in November 2010, the Māori Affairs Select Committee tabled its report on all our submissions. The report had 42 recommendations, the first of which was that Aotearoa New Zealand become a smoke-free nation by 2025. It wasn't 2020, and it wasn't Tupeka Kore. The reasons why are purely political. But it was a major gain for our sector and for Māori. 
Then in March 2011, a miracle happened. It was more than a miracle. It was awesome advocacy and leadership. And I, I acknowledge all the members in this room today who were part of the rally for submissions. Our government committed to a bunch of the 42 recommendations, including the first that Aotearoa New Zealand becomes smoke-free by 2025, less than 5% by 2025, equity across populations in tobacco. Now the smoke-free, oh I haven't, it's not playing, what, what happened? Has it not been playing? Was I supposed to press that button? Is it not the video? Didn't you have an MP4 that was just going to play the video? Too late now. You've missed it. Do I have to keep on clicking now? I thought we had an MP4. I can keep on clicking from here. We might have to catch up a little bit. Now the National Smoke Free Working Group is the strategic hub for coordinating this nation's health promotion and leadership. The steering group for the vision reported back to it. These days we have steering groups for tax increase monitoring and reporting, smoke free cars advocacy, evidence building on electric, uh, electronic nicotine delivery systems, and all of government approach, and most importantly, in continuation of the work of the vision for 2020, a road map to 2025. And now if you open up your um, booklets for today, you'll see a brochure and that's got the road map on the back page. It's called the Smoke Free National Action Plan and if you open it up on the back page, there is the road map. This road map is based on the consensus work the consensus around our motto of what is most urgent of measures that need to be done to ensure we achieve the vision, the government's goal of a smoke-free nation by 2025. It would be so nice to have a government strategy, wouldn't it? Well, we don't, not yet. So the Smoke Free National, the National Smoke Free Working Group developed this in consultation with the sector the national sector, region by region, we've, we've asked. And thank you to the actual participants and representatives that sit in this room today um, that took part in the national cons consultation. First back in 2011 and 2012, and then again in 2014 and 2015. You see, we have to write it every three years because it's not the government's strategy it's our sector's advocacy priorities for what gets into the government strategy. We're still waiting for that, remember? If there's an election and a newly formed government every three years, then we have to update the roadmap every three years. The roadmap comes with a full Smoke Free National Action Plan. And I've got the full National Action Plan here. If you're a Tables. Every councillor can find themselves in this work just like any other member of our tobacco control sector. Now on the roadmap you'll work as a bullet point or two within the orange box of activities titled Working Together. In the, sm in the full Smoke Free National Action Plan or SNAP you're a whole row or two within a table or two. There are three tables of action specific to three key objectives. One, to increase successful quitting among the people still standing and smoking in Aotearoa. You've learnt a lot about the story of, uh, I, I hope you know the reasons why we're trying to get everybody to quit and we've heard a lot of that commitment today from Christchurch's Mayor this morning. But number two, to rally the public support for the goal and the measures it will take to achieve the goal. And of course, that's where your health promoters 
um, councillors. Your health promoters come to you and they're talking about the public support that they've rallied for smoke-free cars, uh, for retailer licensing, for the tax increase, for the smoke-free CBD. The evidence has always been there. The public want it and support it. And number three, of course, to advocate for the legislative and regulatory measures that make selling tobacco totally difficult for the industry, to drive them off our shores. If you take action within this framework of objectives and coordinated activity, and you do it successfully so that these measures are achieved, then we have the best chance of getting to the goal. Now lead agents, I'm getting, I'm catching up now, finally catching up now. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just been flowing in and out randomly because it was actually timed to what I was saying if it, it had been the video. Uh, our lead agents at present are myself for public support, Stephanie Eric for legislation, she's the executive director of ASH and she's there for legislation and regulation, Zoe Hawke who's here this morning, um, she's here for Maori leadership and cessation. Edward Cowley from Tala Pacifica is um, the lead agent for Pacific Leadership and Cessation. Catherine Clark of Whakawhetu Sudi is a lead agent for Pregnancy and Parenting. And there's Michael Onslow Smith of the Mental Health Foundation for Mental Health Leadership and Cessation. If you don't know any of these people, your health promoters will. And, uh, and, and if the health promoters in the room don't know these people, then uh, that's the first action you need to do as you leave the room. We're blessed in New Zealand with a small and nimble sector, with a proven record in coordinating effectively nationwide to achieve our objectives. Our work is being watched closely around the world. I hope you have specific questions on measures and actions during the panel discussion and I look forward to saving lives with all of you as we do this mahi together. As it was said in, the, in this video at the very start, tobacco kills up to 5,000 New Zealanders every year. This means that before 2025, there are 50,000 lives for us to save. And so this Smoke Free National Action Plan can help us coordinate our work so that together we can be a united voice for action toward achieving the smoke-free 2025 goal. Thank you.